Welcome back to Off the Jeep End. If you've never seen our videos before, definitely go and check them out. It's probably something in there that could help you out. Uh, we got a lot of cool videos up there right now, and this one included. All right, uh, so uh, my Jeep here, Candy 98XJ, uh, it shakes a lot. It almost feels like if you go to the center console, I'll just show you real quick. All right, so if you get in the Jeep here, all right, I'm at the passenger side. Uh, if you put your hand on here and you feel a shaking, uh, you know, it almost feels like the drive shaft is going round and round, but you're stopped. And, uh, you know, it kind of it's kind of rumbling. Uh, you know, might think it's a motor mount. And if you could bench press your trans and transfer case, odds are your problem is your trans mount. All right. Uh, so that's what I did. I went under the Jeep. I could literally bench press the trans and transfer case and I could lift it up and down no problem. So that rubber separated and it's my fault uh, for buying a cheap mount to start off with. Uh, so I went and got a little bit more expensive of a rubber mount. I didn't go poly. Some people kind of are iffy about poly mounts. Uh, they are very expensive for sure. But uh, some of them say you just feel every bump. And uh, I just decided to go with the rubber for now. Uh, and I also modified the cross member a little bit because the nut certs inside broke off all right so i wasn't able to get the cross member out to do the drop kit for when i did the lift and the tires and everything uh, it's got a four and a half inch lift on it right now so i went with about an inch and a quarter went with about an inch and a quarter body uh, i went with about an inch and a quarter uh drop kit here i want to say it was a daystar kit so as you can see here, you got your mount. Now I'm gonna show you how much my trans moves. That is not good. So you're, you're gonna wanna go about eight, eight and a quarter inches off the side wall. All right, you're gonna to wanna to just about hug that lip. All right, and I got a lot of spray foam in there. That was a very stupid idea. I just put spray foam in there after I did this install. And uh, what do you know, I gotta take the trans back out, so I had to dig through all that stuff. Not a good idea. Don't do that. So I drilled one hole here because the, the rear bolt gave me an issue. Okay, this bolt here gave me a problem. Uh, so I ended up getting a new bolt for that. We'll pull that out and I'll give you a size on that. Uh, the front bolts, they ended up being pretty good. Uh, they came out with ease. So I didn't end up uh, replacing those nuts in there. Um, so as long as you drill the two holes in here and uh, you put a nut up top and you can get to it through here, uh, you can put one socket on there with a wrench and then you can come down here and you can you know, loosen with this wrench and hold the wrench up top still. Okay, uh, so let me go ahead and take these out. So I have these grade eight bolts here that I have that I bought. They are three inch and three quarter long. All right, you could probably get away with a four inch. Uh, I probably would have went with a four inch if I could do it again. Um, so one problem I already found is this bushing here on the end. This is from the transmission drop kit that I installed. If you have a stock Jeep, you won't have this. Uh, so you might be able to get away with maybe a three and a half inch bolt, three and a quarter, maybe even a three inch. Uh, I redid this. Of course, I took the cross member down when I did the lift kit. So uh, the bushing inside of here, or the sleeve rather, uh, got stuck on the bolt because I didn't anti-seize it. No problem, though. It's going to stay in there. It's a grade 8 bolt. It'll last forever. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to get that bolt, get a nut that matches. I got one for the rears. Because the fronts were okay. Uh, the nuts are inside of the frame. They ended up being good. So I just kept those. But if I ever have to do it again, uh, obviously I'll just do the same thing I did. Just drill a hole in the tub. Uh, right above the frame and I can easily access that front piece 
Uh, so that's what you're gonna have to do for this trans mount. Uh, now all I gotta do is I gotta take that trans mount out of the top, put the new one in with the same bolts, and then we put this cross member back up. So let's get to it. All right, so now we gotta replace the trans mount. So I'll show you guys that anyway. Uh, you're gonna have two bolts, one right here, and just one on the opposite side. Okay, so we got the trans mount out. Here's your bolt holes. You got one, you got another one right about there. Okay, so we have our new trans mount here, pretty sturdy. Uh, I can include the price right about here somewhere. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and uh, throw this back up. Now, if you wanna know how it goes, if you look on top, there's a circle. Your circle is gonna be closer to one side than it is the other. So now you're going to want the circle that's closer to this bolt hole, All right? This distance is closer. You're going to want that on the passenger side, okay? Just like so. All right, let's go ahead and let's put those back up. And don't forget, you're going to have your plate uh, with your muffler hanger. Uh, I don't use mine, but we're going to throw it back up anyway. That's how it's supposed to be. Okay, it's gonna go just like that. And we're gonna throw one bolt up through here. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fit our cross member. We have one side in. We wanna make sure that the bolts line up, the four bolts that connect the cross member. To All right, so there it is. Uh, you know, you're going to just put your bolts back in. Uh, just put, uh, you know, use the jack, tighten it up. And then you're going to get this bolt in first. And you're just going to want to put the nut in up top from the body. Bring it down and just thread it on there a little bit. Do the other side the same thing. Uh, and then you're going to want to get these bolts in as well. And you're going to throw them into the frame. Put the nut in. And uh, just tighten them up. And that's pretty much it. Uh, especially if you use grade A bolts. Uh, this is a pretty indestructible way of doing it. And, uh, you know, it hasn't failed me. If I could do it again, I would probably stick a bolt down through there. And I would try to weld uh, the bolt head in place inside the frame. And have the nut sticking through the bottom of the frame. Uh, and then I could just, you know, screw the nut on, screw the nut off if I ever want to take the cross member out. But this is the way that I did it. Uh, it's still pretty easy just taking the carpet up, you know, just move the seats back and you got it from there on. All right. So go check out our other videos. Subscribe. Give us a like. Stay Jeepin'.